Hello, welcome to this session about how to best support your piano parents. I have a few suggestions for you and I'd love to hear any of your views as well. Um, basically, this is a session about piano parents, but it can be any instrument really, about learning any instrument or indeed learning in general because parents are so key, aren't they, when a child learns to read um, they need their parent there to support them. So it's the same kind of principle. Um, when I first started Keynotes, um, three years, three and a half years ago now, uh, one of the key things that I wanted to um, implement, and I wanted it to be a real disruptor, was this idea of communicating with parents and um, making sure that they know how their child needs to practice at home and what they need to practice. Because I was working in a secondary school um, and heard time and time again about the, the piano teachers or the instrumental teachers that would come into the school and they would see um, children, take children out their lessons and give them their instrumental lesson. And so often, from one week to the next, they hadn't done any practice, they hadn't made any progress, and the teachers had no contact at all with the parents. So I really saw this as a very significant problem and a big reason why these children weren't kind of making the progress that they should. And then the relationship both with the instrument, with the teacher, um, becomes very negative and kind of frantic. So, um, so that's kind of my aim was really to um, really change this and to really think about how this could... Um, be eradicated really as a problem um, and that was alongside of course working out how to implement um, teaching piano in a group so those two things kind of came together the consideration of how to teach piano in a group and how to communicate what the children need to do to their parents okay um, first of all I think it's really important to think about why it is imperative that parents are involved with their kids' practice, with their kids' learning. Um, for many years, I've got many years of teaching experience and then experience as a mum, and I've seen the impact that parental support and encouragement at home can have. Um, and it's on their children's progress, but when I say progress, I don't just mean as in um, advancing skills. I don't mean kind of the progress in getting better at the piano, getting better at the thing that they're doing. Because although obviously that is the aim and that's what we all want, what we should first of all be thinking about is um, the, their relationship with the instrument and their progress in nurturing their love of what they are doing, um, their positivity, their confidence. Because without all of those things, then the, the kind of physical, the actual skills development isn't going to happen um, to any, you know, not to any great success. Um, so the area that I like to talk about with regards to this is called um, self-efficacy. And that is where you are, um, if you believe that you can do something, you're going to put a lot more effort into actually doing it. And I think that parents are really key in developing a child's sense of self-efficacy um, and making sure that this self-efficacy isn't um, compromised or isn't low in any way. Um, and that's because in the week between when they see us and then the following week they see us again, if they have gone home and they have managed to achieve what we've asked them to do, then they're going to come back to the next lesson feeling full of beans, full of confidence and ready to take on the next challenge, ready. They're going to be on, in their sweet spot for learning because they have a high self-efficacy. Okay, so that's really important. Um, and as I say, that is largely determined by what they do at home in between the lessons. We need to ensure that we're giving parents the tools to make that as successful as possible so they're building um, that enjoyment and that love of playing their instrument. Um, I think some parents um, are, they sometimes say to their children, right, you need to go and practice. But that, oh, excuse me, that's my dog stepping on a toy. <laughs> um, but that doesn't necessarily, um, that's not necessarily the whole picture that's not necessarily the all that we need um, because they might go off and they might 
without their parents' interaction, they might kind of be practicing wrong or they might um, get distracted and do something else, especially if they've got one of those keyboards that's got lots of sounds and songs on. They might kind of start... And, and if they've got headphones on and the parents don't know what they're doing, that can sometimes be a bit of an issue. Like, we want them to enjoy it and to have creative time, but we also need it to be, to you know, to work, to... to uh, for them to be working on what they should be. So even if a parent says, right, okay, let it's practice time. And I encourage daily practice. I know it's not always possible. But if they um, say, right, it's practice time, um, we are going to, this is what you're going to do today. And if you had, if they had a little kind of whiteboard of tasks that they could cross off or tick off. Um, and then basically leave even if you have to leave them to it if parents have to leave them to it and then return later to hear what they've done that kind of interaction is going to be really key for children um i mean it's like imagine a parent sending a child off to a beginner reader off to do their reading and they went there with them well they could have you know said all of the words completely wrong and the parents wouldn't necessarily have known so it's really essential that we check that parents check up on their learning afterwards and um so that's like kind of relevant with the beginners but then even as they advance um they still need our support now i've got um my son this week has been learning a very complicated cello sonata and I'm on the verge of finding it quite difficult to help him because it's getting so complicated. But it does have to be broken down um, bar by bar and he has to do these repetitions for each bar or for each measure. And, um, and I might say to him, I've got three children and between them they play five instruments. And I might be helping Hetty on the piano and I might say to him, right, go and set up your cello, I'll be up in a minute. And then I can hear him just playing through the piece. I'm sure you guys have all uh, all know that this is going on with your own students. Playing through the piece, playing through all of his mistakes. Um, even though he's been learning for five years or so. And we talk every time about breaking it down, doing the repetitions. But it's not until I get there and say, right, okay, let's do this bar. Let's do, okay, now five times of that bar. Now let's do this bar that he would actually practice properly. So even at a more advanced age, they really do need our support as parents. Now, I know that many parents might point out that it's very easy for me to do that because I'm a music teacher. Although, as I say, it's starting to get a little bit more complicated because I'm not a cello teacher. But um, I think, I wonder how many of you as teachers have had parents saying that they find it difficult to practice with their child at home because they don't know how to do it themselves. So when they support their child with their reading, obviously they know how to read. Um, but if they don't know how to play the piano and they don't even know the basics, then they might find it difficult to support them. Um, I'd love for you to tell me if that's you, if you get parents saying that to you quite a lot, because I know that I certainly do. Um, and what you do, what, how you respond, what you say to them, um, how you support them. Um, just write in the comments whenever you feel like it. So here are a few ideas that I've implemented in my programme. And by the way, I'm talking in the context of groups because I think that children, when they, um, particularly when they come to a group um, after a week of practice or, or lack of practice, um, and then they're playing in front of their peers, I think that can bring a whole different dynamic altogether. So it's not just being worried about not playing correctly for your teacher. It, it's kind of seeing what other people have managed to achieve that week and, and being able to um, show them what you've achieved, um, which is so it's, it's one of the great things about the group dynamic and the group setup, that peer motivation, the fact that you can perform to each other. So th in my group programme, this is what I have set up. So first of all, I have videos. Um, I have practice videos. Oh my goodness me, sorry, this dog is trying to chew everything. <laughs> I have practice videos and um Basically, I've gone through a few different ways of delivering them. Um, I sometimes I would send them over my music staff, or I would sometimes um, 
put them in a, a private Facebook group with just my parents. But actually what we've settled on is I've made some professional, more professional ones, and we've got an app that parents have access to. And it's not just my parents, it's parents of everyone who teaches the Keynotes program. So I just wanted to show you an example of a practice video and um, then take you through what I think the really important aspects of a practice video are. I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm going to take you through the Hello Song, which is a song that we play at the beginning of every principal Keynotes workbook. The reason for this is so that the children can get warmed up again after a bit of a break. Um, it uses a nice five finger C position. And also it's a really fun group song because they all get a turn to play on their own, but we're also playing as an ensemble. And it's kind of a question and answer between the teacher and the students. And this is how it sounds. So your teacher would sing this. Hello children, how are you? would reply we are very well thank you so they have finger five on the g finger four on the f three on the e two on the d and one on the c okay so they're just going five four three two one 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 and the idea is the teacher would keep playing it and each student would reply with their answer and you can extend this by playing in octave so you're playing the same thing in both hands I need to in the left hand I need to put finger one on the G okay and go down sometimes you might get this because they are using five and four and three and two and one together but just make sure that they start both of them on the G and then there's this independent left hand and actually, if they find this right hand tricky, they could start with this one where it's very well, thank you. Or they can play that with the right hand. Oh, very well, thank you. The next step is that they could play the chord. So we have finger five on the C, finger three on the E, and finger one on the G. And we play a C chord. And then we move our finger five and three to the B and the D and keep our finger one on the G. And then we move it back. There we go. We are very well, thank you. Just play that again. We are very well, thank you. And then the last extension is to put those chords into what we call an Alberti bass. So you're playing. C and then G and E G and then for the G chord you're playing B G D G so it's going to sound like this Okay, so I'll just stop it there. Um, I just summarised basically the different steps. But I'm just going to take you through what was in that video that will help parents. Um, so basically, you have your... Um, I was talking about where the notes are, what the finger numbers are, so the very basics of um, learning the piano because they might not know those things, okay? Um, <clears throat> obviously, I was taking them through the main melody what the kind of the main objective for the lesson what they should have learnt that lesson but also I was taking them through um what mistakes might occur the ones that I've seen occur in my lessons time and time again and that I have to correct so that they can see that that has happened and corrected at home um I also really importantly tell them what the extensions are so um, each song in the keynotes workbooks has different difficulty levels and um, if they are playing the the main tune really easily at home and um, the parent could help them and support them to play the next steps and move to the next step and then by the time they come back to the lesson the next week hopefully they're going to be super proud that they reached um a, you know a further step than they did within the lesson itself okay so kind of giving out those extensions um 
yeah and as i say sometimes um i showed i showed them how they might move in contrary motion by mistake but um sometimes i might show them a particularly tricky um aspect a, a difficult fingering or something and go through that quite slowly so that they can help them with that at home and sometimes if you need to give them a rhyme or something to help them remember um the the tricky part then that helps as well so um, as I say, these are available on an app for parents, which makes them really super accessible um, for both the parent and the child. So I would expect the children and the parents to watch this. Um, now, obviously, not everyone's going to have access to that. So as I say, you could do, um, if you use My Music Staff, you can upload them there. I know that there are a couple of other programs where you can upload videos for parents. Um, or Facebook group is a really great way to communicate with parents and to let them know what you did that lesson, um, put up a video, even if you wanted to just type up something quickly. Um, and if you had to take videos or photographs of your classes, you could upload those to your Facebook group. It's basically giving the parents as much, um, as many tools as possible to help their children at home. Um, the next idea that I have implemented um, are practice sheets. Now, again, I can do these because lots of children are doing the same pieces. If you have like 20 children, they're all doing different uh, method books and that, this would be quite impossible. But because I have 120 children doing probably, um, what are they doing about? between them about six workbooks I can I can do these sheets um, and they are available for all the other keynotes teachers as well so I'm just going to let's hope this works oh dear okay so this is an example of one I don't know if you can see that clearly and basically it gives the parents ideas of what they can do on a daily basis oh. and on a weekly basis. So on a daily basis, I would say they need to be, these, this is for the very little ones, the beginners, the four to five year olds um, who, who need, you know, lots and lots of consolidating and repetition of concepts. So I would say um, uh, for every day they should be looking for the, the, the note that we've learned that week on the piano, okay? Then they should be singing the piece that we've learnt. Then they should be playing it at least a couple of times a day. And there are little tips for parents as well. And then they have this, um, this bit here is for if they need extension tasks. Occasionally they might... The melody, the right hand melody might be actually the second step of difficulty and actually the easiest part to play is the left hand if it's just kind of accompanying C or B. Um, they, I will occasionally write there that they can, if they're finding a piece tricky, this is what they can do. But otherwise they have extension tasks here and they have um, a drawing um, and a listening task, okay? So, and for each time that they practice, they can colour in part of the character that they're playing about, okay? Um, I have another example here as well. So, if I just move this out of the way, this one, and I can get this Goldilocks one. So this is for the slightly older children. Okay, so um, again, it's laid out in a very similar way um, with the colouring, but there's also other tasks like there might be, um, this is to design the jaw of the three, um, of the three bears, etc. Okay, and there's listening, there's clapping and singing and drawing etc so the the parts that i think are really important here are that you're giving them really specific guidance on what they can do at home and it follows what you're doing in your lesson so we always sing the letter names and the finger numbers as well as the lyrics of each song because that kind of is another way of helping the children to internalize um not only the melody but how to play it okay 
they also obviously get to read it as well but for those that are more kind of oral learners okay so those are the practice sheets and then um there are there are a few other things you can do i mean i think um the fact that so many parents are um say that they don't have the basic skills to support their kids at home i give out you can give out um kind of basic foundation sheets so i've got one in fact if you're um if if you've got my free printables if you're a member of the free printables site there is a foundation sheet on there um that parents can have that takes them through all the basics um, of playing the piano um, but you could also do something like an event where um, you might invite some parents in to your studio in the evening um, I do adult lessons and actually by coincidence they happen to mostly be my parents um, and you're basically teaching them uh, you could have an evening where you teach them the basics face to face, which is obviously um, often a lot more successful than just through a, a piece of paper. And um, you could even kind of uh, do one. I'm going to do one around Christmas time where they'll come away not only knowing more about the basics of piano and how to support their children at home, but they'll also learn to play a Christmas song. I think we'll do Jingle Bells. OK, so. That's another way in which you can support support your parents um, and hopefully I've illustrated why I think it's so important that you do. Um, basically, your aim should be to arm your parents with um, the knowledge they need to help, um, tips to make practice fun and engaging, so like that, the colouring at the end of each practice um, week, that kind of thing. Um, some people might have we have a sticker chart as well actually that we use um but you know different people have different um what's the word incentives some people might like a bit of kind of um other types of bribery <laughs> totally up to the parents um and you need to give them the knowledge of how important their support is because some parents might not realize how important their support is but for those of you um, that are very experienced teachers, you, you know exactly which of your children. I've got groups of eight children and I can tell you exactly which ones practiced or practice on a regular basis because it does make such a huge difference. Okay, so if... Um, I hope some of that has helped. I hope that you are going to be able to implement some things, um, whether it's sending home videos if you don't already do it, or having some practice sheets which have extension tasks and things on. Um, as I say, all of these things are available um, for Keynotes teachers who use the Keynotes program and who are using... I mean, we've got... Actually, we've got teachers using these workbooks for their private students as well as their group students. Um, so I'm just going to pop the details of how to join the program um, underneath this video, as well as the free printables details. And was there one other thing I was going to give to you? I, can't, I don't think so. I think just those two things. I'll tell you about how to join the program, how to join the free printable site, and basically hope to see you in one of those in the near future. Bye.